Welcome to Economics and Beyond. I'm Rob Johnson, President of the Institute for New Economic Thinking. I'm here this evening with Chong In Bai, who's a professor of the School of Economics and Management at the Tsinghua University in Beijing. He's a professor of economics. He is someone who has given me tremendous insights over the years about what is happening in China, about its relationship between its federal government and its municipal, local activities, about credit allocation, and about a broad sense of development across his country. He is a leading scholar. He is a very dear friend of my friend Eric Bergloff, and I'm very excited to have him as my guest tonight. Chong In Bai, you, I'm very grateful to you for joining me tonight, and I, I'm very excited. I look forward to this conversation. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's my pleasure. It's my it's my honor and my pleasure. So we are in a place now where the world is grappling with a pandemic. COVID-19 is the virus. But it appears to me that many, many things that were the habit structures and the mind structures of society are being toppled, being turned over like a chair that's being mm-hmm. turned upside down. Right. And that doesn't mean that we know how to stand. It doesn't mean we have a new platform. But it means that in this time, we have to relearn what it is that matters, what it is that is meaningful, and we need to design our society around that new awareness. And I'm very curious what you have seen that illuminates new possibilities that shows you what has been wrong, that shows you or or, or reveals to you the direction we must take. And I'm speaking also in the context of a U.S.-China relationship, of course, that's been very strained. And how you see from the standpoint I believe you were educated at Cal Berkeley and you are Chinese. How you see in different philosophical terms and everything, what is the challenge that's before us now? Where do we have to rise to the occasion to make this a better world for our children? What what does this pandemic mean to you, sir? Okay, thank you very much, Rob, for uh, for for your uh, very warm introduction and for the uh, questions. Um, I um, I think uh, the uh, pandemic is a terrible, terrible experience for people all over the world, and uh, um, a lot of people died. Uh, a, a lot more families uh, have been suffering. Uh, from the impact, uh, some direct uh, public health uh, issues, some indirect uh, economic uh, uh, issues. And uh, um, I think uh, what the pandemic uh, tells us that uh, uh, is that we, uh, we need to do a lot more uh, to uh, not only to deal with the current uh, challenges, but to uh, deal with possible future risks. And uh, at the moment, uh, uh, we we are still fighting uh, the direct impact of the pandemic. Uh, It uh, it started earlier uh, in China and uh, uh, in China now it's somewhat uh, under control. So economic uh, activities uh, are resuming. Uh, it's not quite normal yet, but it's uh, gradually approaching 
uh, normal uh, economic activities. However, uh, the, uh, the pandemic is still raging uh, in other parts of the world. Um, we um, Chinese people are trying to do uh, whatever we can to help the world to deal with uh, this uh, challenge. And um, we are not that experienced uh, in doing this. Um, and uh, sometimes um, what we uh, have done uh, may not look or sound uh, perfect, but uh, I um, but uh, I, I hope uh, um, uh, people can see uh, the sincerity uh, that's behind the effort uh, made by the Chinese people uh, to uh, help uh, the other parts of the world to deal with the blow of the uh, pandemic. Um, China got help um, when we were in the depth of the epidemic and from the rest of the world. And we got, we received help when we experienced uh, other uh, crises in the past. So uh, I think uh, uh, it's uh, people here sincerely think uh, we, uh, we should help the rest of the world as well. So this is, uh, um, uh, this is one aspect. Uh, then the on the economic side, um, even though the Chinese uh, uh, economy economic activities are gradually resuming to the normal level, however, uh, international demand, external demand for Chinese uh, products and services is very weak at the moment. Uh, so uh, our economy uh, is uh, is uh, very much suffering. Um, so um, I think uh, we hope, so uh, for th this reason as well, uh, we very much hope uh, that uh, uh, the, the pandemic can come under uh, control very soon. Um, and I, I think it's very important at this moment for the international community to work together to uh, deal with the current challenge and future challenges. And uh, I think what this pandemic tells us is that uh, uh, when something happens to one country, it can quickly uh, transmit to other countries. So uh, any challenge that is faced by one country is going to become a common challenge to the world. And uh, earlier, China faced the challenge. Uh, the other parts of the world was helping. Now uh, it's somewhat reversed. Um, so it's very important for us to get together and to uh, work towards a common goal to uh, uh, control uh, the, uh, the, the, the crisis. Um, so this is about the uh, direct uh, uh, impact uh, of the pandemic. And uh, I'm also um, concerned about um, some indirect impacts of the pandemic. One indirect impact is that uh, um, people may have second thoughts about globalization. Um, this is uh, quite understandable um, because uh, um, during uh, uh, the past several months, uh, people see uh, that uh, uh, crisis can be transmitted uh, quickly from one country to the rest of the world. Uh, some people say, uh, think that if we just stopped globalization, that would not uh, uh, happen. And uh, um, but I, I, I'm very concerned that uh, uh, people overreact to this. And um, I think a more pragmatic way to, uh, to deal with this is that uh, uh, we need to um, clearly see the benefits of globalization. I think uh, in the past few decades, uh, every country benefited from globalization. 
although the benefits may not be evenly distributed within uh, countries uh, or within a particular country. And, uh, but still, uh, the globalization uh, is beneficial uh, overall. Uh, if we can uh, better distribute the gains, uh, everybody can benefit. And there are risks uh, created by globalization, uh, but uh, the response, I hope, is not to stop globalization. Rather, it is, uh, the better response is to improve uh, international governance of globalization. And uh, uh, I, we face a lot of challenges there, but uh, if uh, uh, everybody comes to, uh, to, 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 to their reasons, uh, if we can just sit together and uh, try to find uh, a solution to, to these problems, uh, I think uh, we, uh, we, we can find uh, better uh, solutions that protect the benefits of globalization at the same time control the risks the uh, negative side effects of globalization. And another uh, side effect uh, is uh, in the area of uh, international politics. Um, one potential side effect is that uh, the pandemic creates more distrust among nations, among peoples. And uh, to make it worse, some politicians try to utilize uh, the distrust, the, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the higher level of distrust among peoples for their uh, personal political gains and, um, and fan the, uh, the distrust uh, even further. Um, that will be, uh, that's very unfortunate. Uh, however, I, I hope, uh, people can still see that uh, uh, despite of the differences among nations, among peoples, um, there's a lot more that can be achieved if we all work together. Um, uh, I talked about uh, the uh, better governance of, uh, uh, of international economic activities. We can also uh, create a better system, a better set of rules that govern uh, other uh, possible differences, uh, possible collaborations as well. Um, so I, 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 I hope uh, we are not uh, uh, fooled by some politicians that uh, exploit uh, the uh, very bad situation to enhance their political objectives. And um, we all uh, work together to, uh, to we face our differences and we work together to find a common solution. So oh, I uh, think you, Rob, you, uh, let me, let me uh, stop here temporarily. Uh, I, yeah. I will be uh, very uh, glad to, uh, to, to answer your other questions. Yeah. Well, I think, I think you're really painting the right picture and the place, what you might call the end game that many people we're concerned about before the arrival of the pandemic mm -hmm. and during the deterioration of some of the US-China relations mm -hmm. is climate change. Right. How can the two large, you know, let, let's add India to the mix, but how do India and America, America being an advanced country that has very, very bad, what you might call carbon consumption habits, Right. But is that the leadership of a world system? China, India, and the United States. How do we establish the cooperation? You spoke of globalization, and there are many benefits. But mm -hmm. there's also many suspicions being aroused that what I'll call global governance mm -hmm. puts everything under the under the control of the government, but the mm -hmm. governance at the global level doesn't understand the feelings of the people down in right. the streets. Mm -hmm. On the other level, local governance 
can feel your problem, but it has no power to address the things that are causing you discomfort. The nation state, what I'll call from the Treaty of Westphalia in the 1600s, is in tatters. Technology has particularly helped, uh, you might call, diminish or eradicate the boundaries, but for human labor. But I look at I look at the situation now, and I say, the pandemic has shown us that we're not seeing certain things that were of great importance, what some people call resilience rather than efficiency. Mm-hmm. But I also see that global governance at the level in this context of climate between the U.S. and China and India is essential to the survival of mankind on Earth. Mm-hmm. How do we, how do we reach to meet that we might call meet the demands of that mission and that goal? Okay, uh, Rob, I I think uh, you uh, brought up a very important issue that's uh, particularly. Uh, 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 re- relevant and also that can benefit a lot more from uh, better collaboration among countries. That is uh, climate change. C- the climate change is a common threat to the uh, to humankind, and uh, um, I, I think uh, it's very fortunate fortunate that now we have better technology to deal with climate change. Um, there are, um, I think, uh, the uh, uh, the digital technology uh, can play a very important role in dealing with climate change. Um, one problem uh, that uh, one part potential solution to the climate change issue is to use more renewable energy. However, some of the renewable energy. For example, solar power, wind power, uh, they are not stable. Uh, they are not in stable supply, and um, so we need to uh, to use uh, technological means to smooth the supply of energy, and so that that requires a coordinated uh, uh, production of different sources of energy, some renewable, uh, others more uh, traditional. And this kind of co- coordination will be very difficult if we didn't have the digital technology, the internet technology available. Um, so um, there's so then also uh, the development of electric cars, uh, they use uh, uh, batteries to power them, and we can, uh, um, we, with better uh, uh, management, uh, we can uh, have these batteries charged during the uh, period when uh, renewable energy has peak supply. Then uh, energy is stored in the batteries of the cars, and if all these things the supplier, the generator of power, and the consumers of power are connected via the internet. If we have a better uh, uh, management system using uh, um, uh, using more sophisticated algorithm to uh, to deal with the issue, we can um, reduce carbon emission to a very big extent. However, this uh, needs uh, a lot a lot of uh, uh, collaboration. And uh, when one country develops certain technology, if it can be uh, used by other countries through a reasonable arrangement, then uh, it helps to cut uh, uh, emissions. And if we uh, in, if we have uh, we already had some international agreement, but unfortunately, the U.S. quit from the Paris uh, Agreement. But if we can restore that, 
uh, or if it, it, we can even improve on that, have a better agreement among nations, that creates more incentive for each country and for all the people to uh, better use the technology that I described. Uh, I think uh, we can get, uh, uh, we can deal with the climate change issue um, much more effectively uh, than we, uh, we are doing now. So, um, so this is an area where uh, we, can, uh, we can work together. You, you talked about the US-China uh, relationship. Actually, this is very personal to me. Uh, I lived for uh, 14 years in the US, um, three years in California, 11 years in Boston. My son was born in the US. So the US is my second home. Um, so I, 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 it, it, it's uh, um, very unfortunate to see the current uh, relationship between uh, China and US uh, to be in such a bad shape. Um, what I uh, observe uh, is that uh, a lot of the uh, distrust or even animosity is uh, created by lack of mutual understanding, lack of uh, more complete knowledge of uh, one uh, of each other. Uh, I uh, I read Chinese media, and uh, I don't think uh, the Chinese media offers a um, full picture of what's going on in the U.S. I also try to re read the U.S. media. Uh, it's a very unfortunate that uh, the U.S. media doesn't paint a full picture of China either. Um, this cannot be helpful. And uh, if we look at some of the surveys of public opinions, and sometimes uh, the surveys also ask uh, people's uh, perceptions about certain things, then we, uh, we find that the perceptions of people can be very different from reality. Um, we, one example is the Pew survey. Uh, we can go back, people can go to look at it and uh, you'll find that uh, what's found in the survey about people's perce perception of, uh, say about US uh, people's perception about China or um, th those perceptions sometimes can be very different from the reality. So uh, I think uh, that's one source of uh, the problem. So it's uh, the duty of um, of the media, uh, of people like you and me, uh, to to do more, uh, to to enhance the mutual understanding. And the another uh, problem is that uh, politicians are not playing a very positive role there. Uh, they, they see opportunities uh, to benefit from uh, more animosity between the two countries. And they uh, utilize this to pursue their personal uh, political gains. This made things a lot more difficult. So um, that's, I think uh, there are no fundamental uh, conflicts uh, between uh, China and uh, the US. Uh, we both have large markets. Uh, we can uh, benefit a lot from better trade arrangements, better uh, investment arrangements, um, especially as China becomes more prosper prosperous, our demand for, uh, for, for, for US products and services becomes stronger. And so uh, there, is, uh, there should be uh, more uh, room for mutual, uh, mutual gains. Um, it, it, it's just um, very sad to see what's happening 
uh, right now. And to, to, to deal with this, um, one possibility is for the two countries. Uh, maybe we cannot rely on the politicians, but civil society and uh, people uh, who, who are concerned about the future of the world should come together to find some things that the two countries can do together so that people can see the benefit of uh, collaboration between uh, China and US. One such thing will be climate change. If China and US can work there together to uh, help the world to better deal with climate change, to better uh, reduce uh, the threat of climate change, then uh, we, we do something good for the world. Uh, it also builds trusts uh, between us and uh, hopefully uh, that builds foundation for uh, future uh, peaceful coexistence, co coexistence for future uh, collaboration. Rob, I mean, yes, I think uh, you're you're exploring the terrain in an extraordinary uh, and very textured way. In let us let's, let's talk a little bit, you know, as as economists now in the in the mm -hmm. smaller sense, how. Will the Chinese society and economy, in the context of a global pandemic, in a context of the, the rising unemployment and weakness and slowdown all around the world, how will the Chinese economy make it from here to the end of this pandemic? And, and what kind of stresses do you envision within within the Chinese economy slash society. Okay. Um, this, uh, uh, there are uh, sh shorter term uh, measures that we should take and longer term measures that we should take uh, to, um, to, to improve the economic uh, situation. Uh, in the short run, um, we are still working to, uh, to get the uh, consumption environment back to normal. When people are afraid to go out, uh, then uh, it's impossible to uh, get the economy back to normal. So uh, I, I, I think uh, we are developing and we need to develop uh, better uh, mechanisms to uh, make people feel safe to go out, to, uh, to consume, to produce. At the same time, uh, be alert uh, to the risk of the uh, re-emergence of uh, the, uh, the, the uh, COVID-19 uh, in China. So this is a difficult balance, but uh, we are learning uh, to, uh, to, to find a better solution. Um, I think uh, what's, uh, uh, what we learned here uh, hopefully will become uh, useful for other countries uh, when they uh, start to reopen the economy. Um, so this is one thing uh, we are doing uh, now. Secondly, uh, a lot of enterprises uh, have been suffering uh, from the pandemic. Um, if uh, there is no government support, uh, a lot of them may fail. So at this moment, I think uh, one very important thing to do is to, for the government to identify which enterprises are facing acute problems and uh, then find ways to help them to survive uh, if these enterprises have uh, bright future pro uh, prospects but just face uh, temporary uh, difficulties. Um, so uh, I, I think uh, the Chinese government uh, has been trying very hard to do this. But again, uh, there are uh, possible improvements 
in our effort to do that. Uh, thirdly, um, we uh, because uh, external demand is so weak, so uh, we need to find ways to uh, to create some domestic demand um, to fill uh, the shortfall of uh, external demand. And uh, we need to do it in a way that it doesn't affect uh, future uh, trade. Uh, when international environment comes back to normal, um, the exporting firms will still uh, export. We hope uh, the, what we do now does not affect um, their, their future uh, exports. Uh, same thing goes to import. Uh, uh, if uh, I hope what we do now does not affect future uh, imports uh, that much. So, um, so we need to create, find a way to create demand now that doesn't uh, have uh, very much negative impact for the future. And so, um, I I think uh, here uh, one thing the Chinese government is doing is to encourage more investment uh, for uh, digital technology infrastructure. Uh, I think this is a very sensible thing to do because during the pandemic, the use of digital technology has uh, 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 be quickened. Um, for example, we are having this conversation uh, remotely uh, thanks to digital technology. And uh, during the pandemic, a lot of firms are using online conference facilities, are using online offices. Uh, we are teaching using online teaching platforms, etc. So the demand for digital infrastructure uh, has uh, increased a lot. So uh, the Chinese government is encouraging the development of such infrastructure. Um, I, so this is something we are doing now. For the longer run, um, I, 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 I think uh, we should uh, make more effort to increase household consumption as a share of GDP. And uh, um, China's uh, household consumption share in GDP is about 40%, which is uh, uh, lower than uh, most other uh, countries, um, especially the US. In the US, this uh, share is uh, higher than 70%. So uh, I'm not saying the US uh, model is the perfect model. However, uh, a 40% uh, household consumption ratio is, um, is I, I think, is too low. So we need to do more in terms of uh, income distribution, in, uh, in terms of uh, our public finance, uh, to, uh, in terms of our uh, pension system and uh, uh, health insurance system, uh, to, first of all, to increase people's disposable income. Secondly, uh, to reduce uh, the risk they might face by these uh, social insurance programs so that they can feel safe to, to, to consume. And this, uh, I think, uh, in the long run, uh, we need to, to do more along that line. And actually, uh, uh, I, 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 the household consumption as a share of GDP has been gradually rising in the last uh, uh, six, seven years. So we, we just need to keep doing more along that direction. And um, so the Chinese, uh, if we can achieve that, the Chinese consumer market uh, will be a strong uh, engine for international uh, economic growth uh, by creating more demand uh, for uh, products and services. And uh, then uh, we also need to uh, remove uh, some of the uh, obstacles in the market. Um, uh, we, we still have entry barriers uh, in some sectors. Uh, it's still very hard for private enterprises to get uh, uh, 
external financing. Um, uh, it, uh, it's still uh, difficult for rural people to um, to to move to the city uh, urban area uh, permanently and enjoy the same level of social services, uh, including their children's education, so that they can become stable labor force and more efficient labor force in the society. So there are some uh, frictions in the economy that we need to deal with uh, so that the economy functions more uh, uh, efficiently. Um, In terms of our international relationship, uh, we want to uh, uh, develop uh, mutually beneficial trading and investment uh, arrangements with all countries in the world. And uh, uh, we also hope uh, uh, that uh, uh, the, uh, it, the global governance of uh, economic affairs can improve so that when there is dispute between countries, these disputes can be settled by international rules rather than by uh, who is mightier uh, than, than the other party and uh, using might to to determine the uh, to settle the dispute. Mm-hmm. Back to you, Rob. If you could wish, as you know, like you said, your second home is the United States, mm-hmm. and it takes, as they say, even in dysfunction, it takes two to tango. Right. What would you wish for the American government? to do for America that would take the pressure off of the U.S.-China relationship? What have we we not done that has, Michael, would have the potential to create a healing or a more integrated global economy? What, What is your critique of how America is behaving? I think the, um, the uh, the most important part is that uh, uh, the U.S. should uh, lead the world to improve global governance. Um, the um, it's not dif- it's not easy. Uh, I I think uh, uh, the decision making process. Uh, is not very conducive to reach uh, uh, agreements. So we need to work toward more uh, uh, effective decision-making process. If uh, the US can stick to uh, multilateralism, can work together with other countries, then uh, the world will be a much better place. Uh, I think uh, China-U.S. relationship will be in better shape. Um, so th- that that's uh, um, what I hope uh, the U.S. can do more. Um, currently, um, the current administration, U.S. Uh, US administration, uh, I, I, I don't think uh, it is doing uh, the the right thing in terms of. Uh, improving the global governance of economic affairs. For example, at the WTO, um, there is this uh, uh, body of judges that help settle disputes. And the US uh, has not uh, has been blocking the appointments of uh, these judges so that uh, now it will soon become dysfunctional because uh, uh, for the for, for the panel to work, you need at least three judges. However, now uh, w- without new appointments, you will not have three judges to make anything possible, uh, any dispute resolution possible uh, at the WTO. So that I don't think that's conducive to uh, to the function of uh, the international ec- economy. So. Um, Sticking with multilateralism, working with uh, leading, uh, I, I not just working, 
leading uh, the international effort to uh, to 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 improve global governance uh, while leading also uh, pay more attention to uh, other countries' concerns. Um, I think a good leader uh, should be uh, should take care of uh, other members of the community as well. So, uh, it, so, so I, I hope uh, the U.S. can lead the world at the same time, uh, uh, be more, give more weight to other countries' concerns, and uh, improve the global system. That that will be the most important thing to do. Uh, my complaint now is that uh, the U.S. is not doing that. Mm, yes. What uh, what when you look at Asia and you look at the development of Africa, you look at India. What do you see, which you might call the of the way in which China can proceed? to help those regions in development and help itself. I, I, I'm very interested in, in how, in, particularly in light of the turbulence within America, but how China can exert its leadership yes. in a world system. Um, that, that, that's a very good question. Um, um, China is still a an emerging market, a developing country. So, uh, what we learned in the in our development process, um, I think, uh, can shed lights on how uh, other emerging markets can develop. Um, for example, um, uh, if you uh, transplant. Uh, a, a manufacturing facility from a, an advanced economy, for example, Germany, to an African uh, country. Um, because of the differences in management, uh, because of the differences in the, uh, in, in the clients, and because of the differences in human capital of the employees, a simple uh, transplant may not work, uh, as we learned uh, in the last forty years. So you need to 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 adapt the technology to local needs. We have been doing that for forty years, and we have gained experience in uh, making such. Adaptation. I think such experience can be very helpful to other emerging markets. So this is one area China can contribute. The other area is that uh, uh, when we started our economic reform in the late seventies, uh, we we were very much uh, lack of uh, uh, infrastructure. Um, when I went to the U.S. in 1985 for the first time, the the thing that most marveled me was the highways. You can get on the highway and travel without traffic lights very quickly, efficiently. At that time, there was no single highway in China. But then we built a lot of them. And so we came from a, a background when we had very poor infrastructure. Then we made a lot of effort building up infrastructure. Along the way, we built the expertise to build infrastructure in an efficient way. That's, uh, that fits the environment 
that fits the institutional environment, that fits the economic environment of emerging markets. So why don't the world utilize this expertise? Uh, I, um, I, I, I think there's a lot of suspicion from the rest of the world about China's effort to build infrastructure, to make infrastructure investment in Africa, in South Asia, and in other parts of the world. Um, it will be so much better if other countries can work together with China to utilize the expertise, the capabilities China developed uh, in building infrastructure in an efficient way to uh, Africa, to South Asia. Um, I know uh, China does not have rich experience working uh, in international environment. Um, even uh, the, the, the cross-cultural uh, communication skills uh, is very much uh, in shortage among our enterprises. Um, so we face a lot of difficulties um, and sometimes we make mistakes as well because of lack of experience. Um, in our understanding of other countries' fiscal systems, in our lack of understanding of other countries' economy, uh, in our uh, lack of understanding of other countries' culture. So this is an area uh, experienced countries can help. Uh, so if uh, China, US, Europe can work together to improve Africa's infrastructure, um, that will be great for the world. Um, I, um, I, 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 I haven't seen that kind of collaboration um, in full scale. Uh, I hope we can, uh, we can do that. Um, so um, China's uh, development experience in adapting uh, advanced uh, economy to emerging market context and China's ability, capability to build infrastructure uh, and uh, can, can be very beneficial to, to other developing countries. But we need to, uh, all countries need to work together to, to utilize this opportunity. In, uh, in looking at the uh, unfolding, the transformation related to technology, related to the future of work, related to China moving up the value chain, mm -hmm. what role do you see for India in this world economy? What, what do you see that they can do or should do to improve the well-being of their citizens, but while still being mindful of the structure of all that is going on around, uh, around India, around China, around Asia, and around the world? India is a country with great potential um, with, a, uh, with a lot of human capital. Um, the, uh, de the, the demographics is also in favor of, uh, is favorable to, to, to uh, rapid economic growth. Um, so um, I, I, I think uh, India uh, can play and should play a an important role in the uh, world's development. And um, what I said about um, China's relationship with Africa, uh, what can uh, what China can do to help Africa, uh, mm -hmm. also um, applies to India, and. Uh, I, I think uh, at the same time, um, the um, China can also benefit 
a lot from uh, uh, from the development, uh, from better development of uh, Indian uh, economy. Um, not only uh, because it creates uh, a huge market, also because um, India can be very important sources of innovation. And uh, in terms of when you talk about moving up the global value chain, innovation is so important. Uh, but one country cannot do all the innovation. Uh, when you put innovations from different countries together, they become more valuable. And uh, because uh, India and China are uh, all developing countries, so innovation from India uh, is sometimes can be uh, uh, more applicable to China. Uh, similarly, innovations in China can be more applicable in India. So if we can uh, cooperate more and uh, uh, um, encourage the exchange of uh, ideas, the exchange of goods and services, um, I see great potential for uh, economic relations between China and India. Um, I, 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 I just, I, I see m much better prospects for uh, collaboration than, uh, than, than the potential of conflicts in, uh, in economics. Uh, between China and India. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess uh, I'm at a place where we've explored a great deal. Are there other questions? Are there other challenges that you would like to uh, uh, share with our audience at this point? Uh, uh, Rob, let, let me add one more thing about uh, uh, China-India relationship. Um, I think there is another reason why uh, our two countries can uh, can build a better uh, economic relations. Uh, China, uh, the Chinese uh, population is aging, uh, while the Indian population is very young. So uh, it's a natural complement uh, that uh, an aging society works with a uh, young society um, to, to uh, complement uh, one another, each other. So this is uh, another thing uh, I would like to, to add. So if uh, you, you ask me whether uh, there are other things uh, I would like to add, uh, yes, uh, uh, I mentioned the importance of uh, all countries to work together. Uh, to uh, uh, to achieve uh, common goals. Um, I also mentioned that uh, there are naturally a lot of differences. Um, we uh, we don't like differences sometimes, but uh, I hope we can all uh, learn to uh, uh, accommodate uh, differences. And um, I, uh, I about the U.S. Uh, I mentioned uh, that I hope the U.S. can play a better role in improving global governance. I also hope that uh, the U.S. thinks more about long term. What, what do the U.S. see the world will be like in 30 years? Um, if uh, is the U.S. going to be comfortable with what the world will be like in 30 years? Um, can the U.S. Uh, do something to, to change the trajectory of, uh, uh, of the development? Um, how can it help to change it in a better way uh, if it wants to if it doesn't like some of the aspects, is it possible for the U.S. to stop that trend? Uh, I, 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 I very much hope that uh, um, people can 
take a longer term view, uh, then see um, what the world will be like and how do we move from here to there without uh, 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 a lot of conflicts. Um, so that, that that's something I would like to ur urge. Uh, um, urge uh, the, the US uh, to, to think more about. Then about Europe, uh, I also hope uh, people in Europe uh, will uh, think more about this uh, issue as well. And uh, um, uh, Europe should play a bigger role uh, in the world stage. And um, I, I, I hope China can, and Europe can work together uh, as well as uh, other countries to do that. Uh, then yeah. you mentioned India. Uh, I, 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 I'm very hopeful that uh, because uh, there are there are some border disputes, but those are more emotional than 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 pragmatic. Uh, if we can just overcome the emotions and just um, think more rationally about how we can uh, work together to improve the future of both countries, then I'm very hopeful about China-India relationship as well. Mm -hmm. So um, I, uh, I just hope uh, we, we can um, all look more uh, into the longer term, look more uh, at uh, possible benefits from better club collaboration and make this world better and more peaceful. Well, that's a, uh, I would say, that's a lovely vision and in these difficult times. The fact that you have such a constructive spirit is, a, how I say, an example. I have 11,000 young scholars in the Young Scholars Initiative at INET and I want each and every one of them to listen to what you shared with me tonight. Thank you, Rob. Because you are an extremely insightful professional. You've mastered the skills. You've mastered the use of the tools. But you have a gift. And our mutual friend, Eric Bergloff, alerted me to this many years ago. You have a gift for asking the right questions. And I think anybody among the young scholars who aspires to be an economist, to be a leader and to be influential in the future can draw inspiration from listening to you. Thank so, you very much, Ron. I hope that before too many months pass, we can come back together on this podcast and continue to explore how things are unfolding. But tonight, I just want to thank you for an excellent, excellent sharing of your concerns and your vision. And, uh, and you're an extraordinary man. And that was evident tonight. Thank you. So thank you. We, I hope sign. we can uh, have uh, other opportunities to talk and uh, I'll be very happy to. As soon as I can get on an airplane, I'll come to Beijing to see you. That's for sure. And if you're okay, ever thanks. in New York, I, I, I look you, forward you to have, that. You have yes. a home. Uh, you have a I, home I, I also have plans. Yeah, I also have plans um, to visit New York. I hope I can uh, visit you when I uh, am Always. in New York. Okay. Always. So let's sign off for tonight, but with the promise that the listeners of this podcast can count on the fact that you and I will convene again and again and again in the future and explore the issues that, uh, what you might say, are near and dear to your heart. But thank you for what you gave us tonight. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. And check out more from the Institute for New Economic Thinking at ineteconomics.org.